Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's your boy Delray Richardson, Platinum Artist, Platinum Songwriter, Straight Game TV. Let's get into it. Man. It's what you're really not focused on that you should be focused on. Because these people play the long game. They don't play the short game. I want to give y'all some, some real good conversation today. I hope Puffy get a chance to watch what I'm about to say. Um, maybe it'd help him uh, to clean up what he got going on around him a little bit. But maybe not. You know, everybody think for what they think for, you know. Let's get into it. DMC, got signs, Robert Brown, Lafayette, Indiana. In the building, what's happening? We about to get into it. I, I want, I want, um, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shed some light on some things, man, that I don't really think a lot of people, once again, you know, when you come in here for this straight game, we ain't really trying to do a whole bunch of speculation. We're doing more, uh, uh, more probability. You know what I mean? We're doing a more of a mathematical, uh, uh, Approach to this, John Serrano, Mellow Peace, what's happening? Fatima Barrett, Eric Davenport, um, JD, what's happening? Uh, God Science, what's happening? Robert Brown, Jewel King, Peace, what's happening? Brown's Real Brooklyn, what's up? What's up, Brooklyn? Uh, uh, Key Brown, Yo Yo, JD, Emotional Intelligence, what's happening? Jim Dell. I'm going to get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, as I told you guys a few days ago when I went live, involving the situation with Keefe D and how these people can go back and look at something and come to a different conclusion and approach it in a way that most people wouldn't think that they would be able to. Jason, uh, Money Mon Riley, Jeff Boyd, Jim Dell. Yeah, let's 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 get into it. So look, as we see, uh, they are now going back, right, and looking into the 1999 shooting, uh, where Jennifer Lopez and Sean P. D. D. Combs were arrested, and they're focusing new attention on this case. Now, if you think that they're focusing new attention on that case, then what you think that they're going to do involving the Keefe D case and the murder of Tupac Shakur? I told you guys a couple of days ago, I said, look, you know, they also named another shooting in which the guy Little Rod had put in the, and that's the most substantial part that I think in that situation because he took a picture of the clothes in the bathroom and the blood on the floor and all of those things. And he explained that allegedly it was Sean P. Diddy Combs and his son in the bathroom with this kid when this kid was shot. See, all of the tough boy, tough guy posturing, all of that shit. See, look, all of that goes out the window when these people come and they start locking people up. Then you see who stands on what. You know what I mean? And like I said, at the end of the day, I don't come to try to decide how much money somebody got, what they is back in their house payments. And I don't care about that. That's their business, whatever. But the information that was made public in the situation involving the, um, the, uh, the situation involving the shooting at the studio, right? Now we have them now focused on because if they don't have anything and they can't find any evidence involving whatever other stuff that Little Rod had put in that thing about, you know, the the, the sex workers and all of that, I, I don't believe none of that. I don't, I don't, I'm not falling for that one. That that one right there, that doesn't really have any, you know, the 50 cent baby mama. You know, she's basically saying, no, that wasn't what, what she was. We've seen the pictures where her and Sean Peter D. Combs holding hands. That doesn't look, that doesn't appear to be the situation that they want to paint that out to be. It just simply doesn't. Some things just don't have no teeth. 
But let me tell you what has teeth and that can really bite. You know what I mean? From my perspective. And like I said, from what I understand factually. So now the young lady who was shot at the nightclub, Natanya Rubin, was one of the three people shot um, during the altercation in which Sean Pity D. Combs and Jennifer L Lopez was arrested, right? They are now focusing on that case. If you remember, Shine did not go to jail for the actual shoot. Shine was found guilty, right? For basically uh, the possession, basically the gun charge, if you will. You know what I mean? Shine went to jail for the gun charge and a few other things that was involved with that, that situation, but nobody was ever found guilty for the shooting itself. There was also a um, civil suit involving that in which Sean P. Diddy Combs settled the civil suit. The number in that civil suit was like $130 million, right? Um, so Sean, he went to jail uh, for uh, basically criminal, criminal possession of a weapon, first degree assault, and reckless endangerment, right? And he was acquitted of the attempted murder charge, but nobody was ever convicted in the shooting. The young lady, uh, Natanya Rubin, was interviewed on News Nation just recently, right? And she said that she was willing because she still had pieces of the bullet in her face, that she was willing to have a doctor remove part of the bullet still in her face from the shooting if needed to reopen the case against Sean P. Diddy Combs. And she also said, and I quote, who better to tell you what happened than the person who got shot smack dab in between my eyes? Right? Now, because Little Rod had said something in regards to what um, Sean P. Diddy Combs said to him about that shooting, right? Little Rod, Rodney Little Rod Jones, in filing his civil lawsuit against Sean P. Diddy Combs and Cuba Gooding Jr. for, you know, the, the situation that he said happened with him involved in that situation, right? He claims that, um, that Sean P. Diddy Combs displayed his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people, according to USA Today, right? Jones alleged in the lawsuit, if y'all haven't seen it, right, that Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City uh, with Rapper Shine. Little Rod also said that Sean P. Diddy Combs alleged that Jennifer Lopez carried the firearm into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into the altercation with another individual, right? You, you follow me, right? So now, Sean P. D. Combs' lawyer, Sean Holly, came out and said, that's all a lie. He don't know what he's talking about, and so on and so forth. Little Rod may not know what he's talking about, uh, but Natanya Rubin, the person who was shot smack dab in between the eyes, oh, she know what she's talking about, and she basically said, like I said before, right? She said that Sean... P. Diddy Combs was the person who shot her. Natanya Rubin, one of the three people shot during the altercation, maintains that Combs was the one who shot her that night and has renewed her accusation in recent days. Now, all because of this situation involving Little Rod. All of this, which could have been settled, like I've told y'all before, for 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 same amount of money. Listen, remember I told y'all about the fifty thousand dollars, right? That must be their lucky number, you know, or because Little Rod said he was owed fifty thousand dollars or something like that, and he wanted his money. But don't you find it ironic that it says that 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 Combs and Jones and Burrow faced right charges related to gun possession? Mean uh, uh show uh, um. Uh, Sean uh, P. Diddy Combs and and Shine face a drug uh, a, a gun card gun charges. I'm sorry, gun charges related to the gun possession. And prosecutors allege that Jones, right, attempted to bribe the driver 
Jones attempted to bribe the driver that left the nightclub to tell police the gun was in his exchange for $50,000. So $50,000 involved in the shooting in 1999 was offered to the driver to bribe him, right? And here we have it in 2024. Lil Rye filed a civil lawsuit alleged before the situation came about where he filed a lawsuit that he was owed $50,000 from Sean P. D. D. Combs and he was trying to get his money from him. Don't you find that ironic? $50,000. That $50,000 is a lucky number, huh? You know, when you sit back and you think about it. But, like I said, minus what um, Lil Rod is saying, Natanya Burroughs says she's willing to get, she still has bullet fragments in her face. And she says she's willing to let a doctor pull out those bullet fragments, right? To have the case reopened against Sean P. Diddy Combs. It says a lot after all of this time has passed that someone be, would be willing to do that if they didn't believe or they didn't know for a fact that the person that shot them had got away with shooting them. And her only remedy was to file a civil case in regards to that. Right. But let me let me let me take you somewhere even a little bit in, in comparison to what I'm telling you about the Tupac situation involving the Keith E.D. situation. Here's a young lady who basically said that this individual, Sean P.D.D. Combs, did something to her and nobody was. Ever, you find it ironic that nobody was ever in char charge for the shooting, but it was a reckless endangerment, you know, criminal possession of a weapon and all of these other things that Sean took the hit for. And did nine years, right? The key VD situation, right? Now, I told y'all before that if we're to believe, if we are to believe, if we are to believe that key VD, his words, his words, if key VD goes to prison for the murder of Tupac Shakur for his words, and mainly that statement that Keefe D gave Greg Katie them in order to get that deal for the proffer agreement. I'm telling you, man, that Sean P. Diddy Combs can and probably will be charged with a murder for hire plot against Tupac Shakur. It's different because you you can't take you can't take some of what Keefe D saying in one instance. The, the initial deal, listen to me, the initial deal, just like they didn't charge Keefe D before, and he then he started talking, and now they charged him because he spoke up against the proffer agreement, and he wasn't supposed to be talking about some of the things that he talked about, right? Listen. When you understand that if Keefe D is convicted in the murder of Tupac Shakur for his words, and what he said and how the prosecutor in Las Vegas is bringing this case, then you best believe that the United States attorney can turn around and file. And but like I said, because they're paying new attention to the Jennifer Lopez, Sean P. D. D. Combs case in New York, where nobody was charged with the shooting. But he then again paid the money for uh, that case to basically, um, you know, the civil case basically to be, you know, thrown out. Right. I'm telling you, and we need to be paying attention to this very carefully because the same thing in the Keefe D case, where Keefe D is basically saying something, saying that, yo, you know, the reason why this happened, among other reasons, and remember, Keefe D was saying he got the gun from Zip and so on and so forth, and this is the time that, you know, we can do two things for one, when the situation happened with Orlando, and once again, all of these statements, I'm not talking about what he did on Vlad or the Art of Dialogue or any other platform. I'm talking about what he told Greg Kading in that first actual interview. When the, with the, the interview that got Keefe D the deal with the federal government and the U.S. Attorney's Office from that perspective. And he basically said that him, Sean Combs, Sean P. D. D. Combs, they met at Greenblatt's. They was downstairs, um, um, you know, and he told him that he wanted, you know, 
he would pay him a million dollars to do something to keep him mean, to, to do something to Suge and Tupac after Tupac wrote uh, hit him up, you know, Sean P. Diddy Combs was mad and so on and so forth. And Keefe D said that he agreed and said that they can handle that and basically said that he wanted a million dollars. Not only that, but after the fact, right, it is also people have made stories around the fact that, you know, um, you know, Sean P. Diddy Combs didn't pay him. And the night at the Peterson Automotive Museum, right, I think, you know, Keefe D was there. Yeah, he probably was trying to come and see, you know, what's up with the money. Can I can he get paid and for whatever reason? Right. Even so, up until this day, up until a few months ago, Keefe D was on the Art of Dialogue talking about um, asking over over the uh, YouTube, can a brother get some show, get shown some love? Brother love, can a brother get shown some love? Right. I'm telling you, if they're focusing and, and they're refocusing their information and attention uh, on the uh, J-Lo, uh, J-Lo, P. Diddy situation, then best believe you can best your, bet your bottom dollar, man. You can bet your bottom dollar that they're looking at that Tupac Shakur murder case involving Keith D. saying what he's saying about Sean P. Diddy Combs in regards to the murder for hire plot um, against Tupac Shakur. If Keefe D goes to jail, because listen, you have to take everything that Keefe D saying in his entirety. You can't take one part of what he's saying and say, well, you know, we believe this part, but this part over here, we don't believe if they use that statement to convict. And this is the number one piece of information and evidence that they're using that they're going to try to convict Keefe D with is the statement that he made to Greg Cating them in the beginning that gave him the deal. If the government, listen to me, y'all, if the government gave Keefe D a proffer agreement deal to escape the charges then at that particular time for the murder of Tupac Shakur, and then they flip around and then they use that statement again as the ultimate evidence to convict Keefe D in the murder of Tupac Shakur after he spoke against the proffer agreement, then everything Keefe D said in that statement is to believe to be true and factual because Keefe D is going to be convicted in that. And therefore, they will probably come and try to indict Sean P. Diddy Combs on the murder for hire plot or accessory to the murder of Tupac Shakur. You can bet your bottom dollar on that one. That is a and, and so, you know, and when you talk about and, and if it's coming from Las Vegas. If it's coming from from anywhere in between of what that is, right? You see down in Georgia right now, they have set precedents in the usage of rap lyrics in the Rico case. You go back to what Sean P. Diddy Combs was saying in Biggie's albums, we coming for you. And we ain't talking about no other rapper. We talking about you, motherfucker. You remember that? Who could he have been talking about? I'm 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 trying to hear what y'all got to say about this. Absolutely. The phone call, everything that KPD said in that initial statement, right? Listen, everything, and, and I understand what you're saying, right? Yeah, absolutely, right? So when you understand that, when we understand that, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, listen, if KVD is convicted, or let's say the prosecution after he's convicted says, okay, well, we need you to testify against Sean P. Diddy. I'm telling you, dude, this is not far-fetched. I ain't talking about what you're buying. I'm talking about what they're selling. I'm talking with, about what the jury going to buy. Now, I'm not talking about what the public going to buy. People have people been listening to, you know, all of this mumbo jumbo. I'm talking about something that's in a court filing in a brief, right? In a murder case involving Tupac Shakur, involving Keefe D, confessing that he had something to do with it. And the inference in which that started 
was from a conversation that he had with Sean P. Diddy Combs at Greenblatt's in Hollywood. Yeah, my yeah, right. Yeah, you yeah, you heard that. And it was my downfall. Absolutely. No, they don't. No, they don't need more than Keefe D's testimony if Keefe D's convicted on his own words and everything that he spoke in in the great because you can't have it two ways. You can't have it, okay, Keefe D, everything that Keefe D said against himself, we can convict him with. But and now we want to bring this against somebody else, it's just hearsay. If it's just hearsay, it's just hearsay all over. It's not just, you know, you know, you can't, yeah, you can't have it both ways. There, there doesn't need to be a paper trail. Where's the paper trail with Keefe D other than what he said about himself? You got to understand the reason that they're bringing the case against Keefe D because he had a proffer deal with the government. And in that proffer agreement, he revealed everything as being truthful and factual. And I'm telling you, if they don't say, you know what, we can't really believe him, you know, beyond a shadow of any, any reasonable doubt, or anything like that, we can't believe him then, you know, he doesn't get convicted, then no. But if he is convicted, it is to be believed that involving the murder of Tupac Shakur, that everything that Keith E.D. gave in that statement is considered to be true. Or else they wouldn't be able to get their conviction. No, he said that it's for entertainment purposes, right? Uh, uh, Leroy Miles, I, I think you the guy who the lawyer. He said it was for entertainment purposes, right? Of course he's going to say that now that he's been arrested for the murder. He didn't think that he would be arrested for murder because he thought that he was granted some kind of immunity beyond what he was granted for. But we see that that's not the deal, and he was not convicted uh, with a prosecutor alone uh, 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 indictment. He was convicted by a grand jury, which is a little bit different and carries a little bit more weight from that perspective. So he can say that whatever he want to say. I'm telling you right now that if he is convicted based on his words and not just from the art of dialogue, not just from Vlad, I'm talking about the words that initially the government believed to be true from Keefe D involving the, the words that got him the proffer agreement. Right? I don't know whether Keith D's going to get off. I, I really, truly, honestly don't know. But I'm telling you this. If, if the government right now is looking back on the shooting involving Jennifer Lopez and Sean Puffy Combs because nobody was convicted in the shooting, a uh, shine received, uh, uh, he was convicted of uh, reckless endangerment, uh, possession of a firearm and, and a bunch of other, you know, charges in which basically he, he did 10, nine years for. Right. But remember, nobody was ever convicted of the shooting. Right. Reckless endangerment. They gave all of these other charges, you know, involving that. But nobody was ever convicted of the shooting. The young lady who was shot said that P. Did he shot her? If you if she's saying that somebody she's saying the person who got shot between the eyes, right, had to be looking at the person who was shooting them. Wouldn't you agree that? This is what the young lady's saying, not what I'm saying. She said that she's willing to go to a doctor and the bullet fragments that she still has in her face today, she's willing to get taken out if it would open up the charges against Sean P. Diddy Combs. That's what she says she's willing to do. Happy Easter, uh, 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 Crystal. I don't know what they can do. I, I really, truly, honestly don't. You know what I mean? Nobody was ever found or convicted in the shooting of Sean P. Diddy Combs. So how can they not open the case, Pedro Gates? I don't know if it's double jeopardy if nobody was uh, uh, found uh, uh, guilty of the shooting. If nobody was found guilty of the shooting and that was one of the, you know, one of the charges and they come up with more evidence, you can retry that charge again. That's not true. So. Yeah, you can. Yeah, if you nobody was found good. Why do you think they're giving new interest into the case? I mean, only 
you know, only the prosecutors basically would know what that was. But if nobody was ever found guilty in the shooting or if he was found not guilty, then that's a whole nother thing. But like I said, once again, they're looking at that in order to make a determination in regards to other situations or for a pattern of behavior, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? So like I said, but let me tell you, I, I, I compare that like I'm telling you. What's different about this situation involving the Tupac Shakur case, right, is the fact that you have Keep Me D and his initial statement unprovoked when being looked at involving the murder of Biggie Smalls when Greg Kading them arrested Keep Me D for the drug charges that they were investigating, right? They were asking Keep Me D because they know he was at the Peterson Automotive Museum that night. Keep Me D confessed to all of that. You know what I mean? Confess, yeah, I was there. You know, I tried to talk. I seen Puff. I seen Biggie. I tried talking to him. He said that, you know, the feds was on him. He was hot right now and so on and so forth. That's what Keefe D, Keefe D said that um, Puffy had told him. And he said the day before, earlier that day, they were at a celebrity basketball game also. Keefe D has confessed to all of these things. Earlier that day, they were at a celebrity basketball game. Then later on that night, they were at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Well, um, well, Big, Biggie was shot that night, right? Okay, now, all of this is on the initial statement that Keefe D gave, gave to Greg Kading, among other things, among the whole confession of what happened that night in Las Vegas, from them going looking for Tupac, from when the shooting happened, from being standing on the corner, um, you know, when the ambulance rolled by, thinking it was funny, and everything that Keefe D said, right? Listen to me, man. Listen to me. All of those things, the government believed and gave Keefe D a proper agreement so that he may avoid the charges at that particular time involving the murder of Tupac Shakur. Right? Since then, things have changed. Think, the thing that has changed is Keefe D went and spoke about the proper agreement in ways he was not supposed to speak about it. Confessing over and over and over again, doubling and tripling down on the fact that he was involved with the murder of Tupac Shakur, how he was involved, saying his nephew was involved, stating who was in the car and all of these things, which at that particular time, Keefe D didn't know that he was supposed to be speaking on after receiving his deal from the government. OK, the. State's attorney in Vegas goes in to check with the U.S. attorney, letting them know that we are about to bring charges. Is there any conflict with the document that he keep ED signed with you guys in, in regards to proffer agreement? And the government had to tell the, the, the prosecutor in Vegas, no. So the prosecutor in Vegas now convenes with a grand jury investigation. Right. Showing them the audit dialogue showing them all of these other interviews that Keefe D did confessing and basically stating that Sean Puffy Combs offered the money to put a hit out on Tupac and Shug. This is Keefe D's words, right? Before we had heard the statement with the Murder Rap DVD, if you haven't seen Murder Rap, and you go back and you listen, right? In regards to that, and the statement and the... um the actual printout of what was being asked by the by the, the FBI and the U.S. attorney and Greg Cating them at that time. He, Keefe D. gave the location, Greenblatt's. He gave the conversation. He gave the fact that Sean P. P. Diddy Combs had showed up with some girl at that meeting where they met and they were all laughing at him in regards to the girl being some kind of loose some she there was like some like she was some kind of freak that all of the homies had hit before, or dudes that Keefe D them knew had slept with the girl before. This is intricate detail that would never be usually given in a situation like that when you asking about something. He Keefe D giving you the dynamics of some girl that Sean P. Diddy Cone showed up with at the meeting, who lived out in LA, who was some chick that everybody knew about. That's something that you don't you, you know, so so you know you know in, in meeting you know you just giving the basics you ain't gonna give that kind of information and and Sean P D D Combs to ask Keefe D what's so funny what y'all laughing about and Keefe D said he told him that man the next time you come out here and you want some girls or whatever whatever 
you know, don't hook up with no girl like her. This is the information that is in the uh, uh, the initial statement that Keefe D. Greg gave to Greg Kading them. So as to the believability of that, right, when presented, this is what the prosecutor in Las Vegas has submitted as that their number one finding in regards to the conviction or what they're going to try to use in convicting Keefe D. To show that it wasn't all entertainment, because at that particular point, when Keefe D made that statement, he wasn't being paid by Vlad. Keefe D wasn't being paid by the Art of Dialogue. Keefe D wasn't being paid by um, any other the networks that were willing to pay him at that time for an interview or for his story at that particular time. You get it? So now, if that statement, and the and and they've also I did a video on it showing you where you know if, if the prosecutor in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the murder of Keefe, um, and the murder of Tupac Shakur is going to be using that statement as their number one piece of evidence to convict Keefe D, then you mean to tell me that if the government went to Keefe D and said, hey, you know what? You know, um, now you've been convicted, we're about to bring charges and we, we want you to testify in our case against Sean P. Diddy Combs in the murder for hire plot of Tupac Shakur. Get it? Like I said, once again, you, you the government can't have it both ways. The government can't have it one way where they convict Keefe D for his statement, but then everything is to be believed in Keefe D statement. So what the question would be, well, why y'all not locking up Puffy for the murder of Tupac Shakur? I told y'all what happened. I told y'all why we did it. I told y'all that he called me afterwards and asked me, was that us? So what they're going to ignore that? That would bring, a much, bring about much more outrage than anything. Think about that for a minute. I need you to think about that one for a minute. You see the young lady, you know, involved in the situation in New York. That, that was 1999. You don't think they're going to go three years before that? I'm talking about what the government knows and what KVD lawyer can go and now has ammunition to use and try to make it easier for his client. You know, he can withdraw. He, they, you know, they always withdraw statements. It does. Listen to me. You at OGs one eight one eight. Ed, Ed, listen, Ed. If I'm saying if Keefe D is convicted with the statement, they're gonna use the number one piece of evidence that they have right now is that statement that Keefe D never thought would be used against them. The one that gave him the proffer agreement. That statement now is being used against him to convict him in the murder of Tupac Shakur. I don't think you, you I don't think you grasping what's going on right now. Then you go into bringing the Vlad interview. Then you go into bringing the Art of Dialogue interview to double and triple down on that. This the, I'm telling you, the way that listen, the government plays the long game. Just like they played the long, it took them how many years to arrest KPD? And they had all the information when he wrote his book. Remember, he wrote his book a few years ago and they did nothing. But once the book was written, then he started to do interviews. And after he started doing interviews, he started doubling and tripling down on what his involvement was. No, they wouldn't need cooperating evidence. No, they wouldn't need cooperating evidence because they don't need cooperating evidence to convict Keefe D. His statement alone is true, is based, is, is, is considered truth in fact. They can indict a ham sandwich, Leroy Miles. You know that. They've indicted people for less and gotten convictions. If you don't have the money to get it, I think the thing that helped Sean P. D. D. Combs out is that he got long money, you know, what's considered to be long money, if you will. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, but that doesn't, uh, 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 Michael X, that doesn't matter at this particular point. Whom the feds hated at one time, they learned to love. You, 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 you don't know that about the government? They hated Nikki Barnes at one time until Nikki Barnes went and told on everybody else, including the, the 80 or 100 people that he told on, you know, in, involving the Gambino crime family and all of those people, Guy Fisher and all those people, too. So so what, what, what name you say it again? See, y'all, you think one y'all think uh, 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 not everybody. Let me. But, but brother, uh, uh, brother Michael X, you, you're thinking one dimensional. I'm thinking five. Because whichever way that the feds had, can play their best hand, they will play their hand. Donald Trump was the former president of the United States, man. Jeffrey Epstein had millions, billions. They had money way before Puffy had money, man. Donald Trump was, 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 had big money way before Puffy did. Don't tell me about no money, man. We just seen that Donald Trump couldn't pay the four hundred million; and had to get it reduced to one hundred and seventy-two. We, like I said, people trying to count people' money. I don't know how much money he got. I really don't care. That's not, Mister Block Ice. I understand what you're saying, but see, that is a um, a widely held thing in regards to um, what the feds were looking for the speculation thereof, I can tell you beyond any shadow of a doubt when politicians got mentioned in that little ride lawsuit talking about Sean P. Diddy Combs had tapes and things of that nature, you see what they went in there looking for. You can see those pictures that TMZ put out there when they looking, went into that little panel with all the wires and they pulled it all apart and they did all of that. That was for those CCTV cameras. Those closed circuit TV cameras, bro. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for evidence involving what they're saying that they, but they're hoping that they can find, you know, like I said, if you got powerful people, it, it brings about a different move. You got to move a little bit different then. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when people thinking just that, they thinking, oh, yeah, you know, remember, you got to look at it. They're saying, oh, you know, I don't all of that, 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 that sex traffic and stuff. I don't I ain't believe in all of that. You ain't when you got money like Sean P.D.D. Combs got money. You ain't got to do all of that. All you got to do is buy, you know, a lot of these women sometimes, not all of them. And because and, I don't like to paint a broad brush and dealing with women because every woman is not like that. But a lot of these women, as you can see, once again, you know, it's it's mixy, it's messy, it's one rapper to another rapper to a ball player to the new ball player. You know, I'm pregnant again. I got a baby coming. You know what I mean? And it ain't got nothing to do with no love. More so, it has to do with being taken care of and being secure. You know what I mean? So let's be clear about what we're looking at when we're seeing what we're seeing involved in this situation. Right? So now, when we're talking about money, when we're talking about things, you know, she wants the new purse. She got the Gucci thing. He bought her a Mercedes. It, you know, that's a lot of times that's chump change. You know what I mean? You know, um, he bought her a car. He leased her a Benz for three years or something like that. She got the new um, Valentino bag or shoes or whatever. You know what I mean? Just stuff, right? They don't plan on doing nothing with any of the money that anybody. And you better hope that if he was paying them money, you know, Puffy was giving them these women money or whatever under whatever uh, uh, disguise or whatever, just to be there for them or, like I say, taking care of them or whatever, whatever. You better be hope they pay taxes on that money. But like I said, once again, I get back to the actual fact of the matter. I'm talking about the Keepy D situation in regards to the Jennifer Lopez and P. Diddy's situation in 1999 versus the situation in which Keefe D implicated Sean P. Diddy, P. Diddy Combs in the murder for hire plot against Tupac Shakur and Suge Knight. And everything that he said, the big zip giving them the gun, basically saying, yeah, y'all can make this move now. Here you, can, you can do a two for one. This is what Keefe D said in 
all of what he was saying in regards to that situation. And you do not need any more corroborating evidence if Keefe D's Leroy Miles is convicted from his own words. If the if his statement is to be, be his statement is to be believed in the situation involving his case that they're going to use when he got the proffer agreement, then everything in that statement is to be believed as to be truthful and factual. Why they gave him a proffer agreement. The United States government gave him a proper agreement. I understand the hearsay rules and exceptions. I do. Like I said, different from different from state and federal. I get it. And like I say, Sean PDD Combs has, has, has the, you know, the money to hire. I'm not talking about the outcome, Leroy. I'm talking about the uh, the income of what can come from a situation like that. We seen with the O.J. Simpson case, same thing. O.J. Simpson was, you know, indicted on the murder of Nicole and Ron Goldman, right? But from you know him having Johnny Cochran on the case, you know, um, you know, if it does not fit, you must acquit. You know, got them, you know, got got him off. Only for O.J. to go do something in Las Vegas involving something else, and we know the real reason that he got the time that he got involved in that situation was somebody was selling his personal items. You know, and he didn't even have the gun. It was somebody else that was with him that had the gun that said that OJ was the one that told us to bring the gun and blah, 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 blah. And they turned around and snitched on OJ. And who went to prison? Right? Don't, like I said once again. Right. But like I said, sometimes. Leroy, I understand what you're talking about, and I don't know how many cases that you've tried. It's not about that. It's about who has the most compelling story. When you get in front of a jury, right? If your story, based on the situation, if the you if you're the arguing attorney on the, on the um the, the, on the defense versus the prosecution, it's who has the most compelling and believable story. This is not about, you know, that 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 goes for the layperson rule. You know, it's not what you know, it's what you can prove, right? If the jury finds that the information being provided by the prosecutor is almost overwhelming, right? Is overwhelming, they're gonna convict. They leave all of that at you. If you got enough money to go and basically uh, uh, appeal the case, okay, then you do so. But a lot of people don't have that kind of money. We see it happen all the time, Leroy. We got black men that have been in prison for 40 years for charges that they didn't do. Murder, rape, all of these things. What are you talking about? You acting like this has never happened before. Absolutely, it can be admissible in the court of law. Like I said, once again, when you... And that's the grounds for being able to overturn something, right, on appeal. And you find the loophole in the case, which a lot of these brothers who are in jail right now that have been wrongfully convicted and then go and work with the Innocence Project and have a new look at their case, finding that the witness lied, the witness was, was coerced by police, all of these things. This is after you did 40 years, though. This is after you did 25 years, though. So what you're saying is, you know, yeah, oh, it can happen. Diddy, listen to me. Let me let me explain something to you. It, it, I don't know what Diddy has. I really, truly, honestly don't. I know that he's been well off and he he, he can probably hire the best legal team um, possible, if you will. Right. But like I said, the humiliation of going through something like that is what that is. I'm not going to tell you that he can or can or can't get rid of it. You know what I mean? Like I said, in the New York case, it seems like that was that was that was so. You know what I mean? Shine basically took the hit for all of that. You know what I mean? But I'm talking about now in dealing with the murder of Tupac Shakur and the government saying, "Hey, you know what? If Keith D is convicted of this based on his statement that he gave to the US attorney and what he was given the proper agreement for, then guess what? We'll 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 be we're uh uh in our right 
to believe that the whole statement is truth and fact. And therefore now it opens up the door for them to go and file charges against Sean P. Diddy Combs because once again, Keith P. D. said that in his initial statement. It's just that simple. Now, whether he going to beat the charge, whether he going to be convicted, I'm talking about what they can do and what they have done. It's just that simple. And you, and as you can see, well, Shine, the young lady said that P. Diddy shot her. This is the the, the new information she just a news na news nation she did an interview and she said that he shot her, right? Sean Shine went to jail. Sean P. Diddy, Sean P. Diddy Combs he wasn't he was found innocent. All the charges that he was um, charged with, right? Yeah, in some ways you're right. Like I said, I'm not here. I'm not here. Um, um, yeah, yeah, and, and I respect that, Leroy. I respect that. I, I, like I said, once again, um, um, and, and like I said, it's not a whether you agree with me or disagree. What I'm giving you is the facts, Leroy. Go look it up. The government is going to use the statement that Keefe D gave to the U.S. attorney, Greg Cady, and the LAPD, when they were investigating the Biggie situation, which he said he had no information on, but he had information on the Tupac situation, which gave him the proffer agreement, right? Now, the initial statement. Keefe D then proceeds to go talk to, after the book was released, go talk to all the dialogue, go first talk to Vlad, go do all of these other things, which he spoke against and was not supposed to be doing all of the talking that he did after giving, being given the proffer agreement. Now he's been indicted in the murder of Tupac Shakur. Keefe D's defense is it was all for entertainment. I did it to make some money. I did it to sell my book. I did it to do all of these things. Despite the fact that in some of the interviews, they were asking Keefe D, are you, you telling the truth? Oh, man, no bullshit. I bullshit you not. Despite the fact that in the initial interview that he did with Greg Cading, the, he, when he, when they asked him, OK, you know, we're going to you're going to talk. And Keefe D made the statement. He said, if you don't bullshit me, I won't bullshit y'all. They're going to play that in Keefe D's case, Leroy. It ain't got nothing to do about what you think or I think. This is now a fact, and they're going to use this information to try to convict Keefe D in the murder of Tupac Shakur. I'm saying to you, if any of what they're going to present and play in the court, including the part, and they put this in the news articles, including the part in which they say that Sean P. Diddy Combs offered Keefe D and his people a million dollars if he could handle Suge Knight and Tupac Shakur, right? That was one of the initial statements that he made. If Keefe D is convicted in his trial involving that statement, then that gives the government enough evidence and go and to um, convene another grand jury, whether on the state or federal level, whichever they feel like they can do it on, to indict Sean P. D. D. Combs in the murder or accessory to the murder or murder for hire involving Tupac Shakur. He does not need a money trail. There was no money. He said that he didn't get paid. There was there's, there, there doesn't need to be a money trail. You can renege, you can renege on, on payment, right? With the with the with the thought that you would be paid for something. You could re, you can renege on payment. He doesn't need a money trail. No. Why? Keefe D has said he never got the money. He said that he went and he tried to get the money and they said the money was given to Zip. You know, Gene Deal has spoke on it and saying, yeah, that Zip kept the money and so on and so forth. Yeah, that that you no, know, that that part right there, yeah, that's what he's that's what that's what uh was told to Keefe D. I'm talking about the initial reason for what they did and why they did it. So now, then you taking every word, I'm talking about the statement by Keefe D. I'm not getting to that zip part two. 
the zip part too, that's in there too. All of that's in there. All of that, I don't know if Zip bought a nightclub or a horse track. I don't know what he bought. You know, may he rest in peace. But what I do know is that's all in the initial statement that got Keefe D the government deal. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this puts the government's back up against the wall, if you can really understand what I'm saying. Because now on one end, you want to convict Keefe D to close the case. But on the other end, you know, and they could they could totally ignore it. They could say, well, you know what? We got Keefe D. We good with it. We don't need nobody else now. That possibly can happen, too. But I'm saying based on what little Rod said in regards to what he's saying, alleging that P. Diddy told him in regards to the situation with the situation in New York about, you know, Jennifer Lopez carrying the gun for him and so on and so forth. Right. It's just not a good look over the same amount that they agreed or that they or that the driver in the shine them case said that they offered to bribe him with fifty thousand dollars. The same thing. That's the same amount of money that Lil Rob was trying to get from from P Diddy, but he said he owed him that fifty thousand dollars. A a bastard, ain't it? No, they wouldn't. I'm telling you, man. Listen. So you, so you guys, you guys have must never. You must. You guys have never heard somebody being indict, indicted on a conspiracy charge. Y'all keep saying that he need. They need. They need. You know, puffy on tape. Let, let's take that out of the situation. People have been indicted on conspiracy charges, man, and based on somebody saying something about them, man. And based on whether that individual was believable. The fact that Keefe D would be at that time convicted in the situation, right? Then they could do anything they want. I'm not saying that they're going to get a conviction. I'm not saying none of that. that. That's what I'm saying. This is this is this is straight game. These are all facts. Everything that I gave you was a fact. It ain't nothing that I'm saying or nothing that I'm coming up with. Nothing that I hope to get you to believe. I'm telling you what the government can do, and they've done it. They've done it, bro. They put they've put black men in jail for forty years for charges that they did not do. Only to find out 40 years later through DNA or some other statement that they didn't do it. And y'all sitting here saying like, you know, some of the guys, people in here, you, you sitting here, sitting here saying like, no, nah, they can't do that. No, nah, PDD got too much money. I get all of that. But that does not stop the government from doing what they want to do. And if they can get a conviction, man, no. You, who, you say poor black men and not rich black men? Okay. If that's what you want to believe. We living in different times now. I get it. I totally get it. I totally get it. I'm telling you that you can't have one without the other. You can't believe one statement, right, without the other. And so, like I said, it would be up to the government. But the fact that, why do you think that they're looking into the case from 1999 then, uh, uh, Mr. Miles. Right, right. They just got Jeffrey Epstein. I ain't, I ain't listening to that not rich black man, man. You know what I mean? I hear, I hear what he said, but that is it, it. That doesn't apply. They just did, did, Michael, uh, 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 the guy Epstein. Did, come on, man. He had more money than Puffy, man. They, they he had money. He had money way before Puffy was even into money, even knew what money was. Donald Trump, the same thing. I don't right. Did they lock up Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson had money. Mike Tyson was rich when he went to prison. Not rich black men. See, so how soon they forget, right? How soon they forget. See what I'm saying? Right. Right. Leroy, what about Mike Tyson? Did Mike Tyson go to jail? He was rich. Huh? Absolutely. Thank you, Miss Brown Sugar. Because it doesn't have it. Wesley Snipes, Ron Isley. <laughs> what, what, what is he talking about, man? And they and that was for tax evasion. Look, they ain't even look, they ain't even commit no real sinister crime. That was for tax evasion. 
Bill Cosby. Right. Did he go to jail? Didn't Bill Cosby go to jail? Leroy, 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 you, you, Leroy, Leroy, I think the jury of the uh, straight game, uh, the jury of the straight game uh, uh, chat has has won. And, and, and basically, I think you've been overruled on that one, if you if you want to call it. We've named at least five or six black men who had money who went to prison for lesser than what we're talking about involving any kind of uh, uh, murder or anything like that. Yeah, he, yeah, he's trying. Yeah, 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 yeah he's trying to move the goalposts. You know, and so, like I said, at the end of the day, more importantly, I just wanted to have this conversation, you know, because this is a real conversation. I don't want to talk about you know, how much money P. Diddy owe on his house. Because I don't know. We don't even know. You know, the cold part about when people talk about that, they don't even know if the man house is in a trust or any of that. Like, people just come up and say stuff, you know. I don't know about that. What I do know about are these facts involved in this situation with KPD and what they're investigating right now in regards to the situation in 1999 involving uh, uh, Jennifer Lopez and Sean P. Diddy Combs because nobody was convicted in the actual shooting and the young lady, um, the young lady who was shot basically is coming out now um, and basically saying that, hey, you know what? Um, I told y'all before. Uh, her name is uh, Natanya Rubin. She said one of the listen, Natanya Rubin, the girl who was shot in New York, basically said one of the three people uh, who was shot during the altercation. She maintains that Sean P. D. D. Combs was the one who shot her that night and has a and has a renewed her accusation in recent days, right? Everybody was locked up and everybody was arrested that night and charged with a situation, right? And um, the, 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 the uh, driver basically said that he was offered $50,000, a $50,000 bribe, right? That to basically to say that, uh, to tell the police the gun uh, was his, his. They wanted, they wanted, <laughs> They Sean P. D. D. Combs wanted the driver to cop to the gun and say the gun was his for fifty thousand dollars. This is the same amount of money that Little Rob alleged that he was owed in regards to the situation before he filed the civil lawsuit, if you will, right? Um, basically, after a weeks long trial, uh, Combs um, and Jones were acquitted, but a New York jury found a Shine guilty of five charges, including criminal possession of a weapon first degree assault and reckless endangerment though burrow was acquitted of attempted murder now shine got shine got charged with everything right and you know sean pd combs was acquitted you know of of his situation involving that but shine got a, got got uh, charged and convicted with a uh, criminal possession of a weapon first degree assault reckless endangerment and um was acquitted of attempted murder the reason why the situation is, I think, being brought back and hashed back to the to the uh, to bring to light again, involving the Little Rod situation, because Little Rod mentioned that in his civil case, right? We know Shine was sentenced and served nearly nine years in prison for his charges, though no one was ever charged and found guilty. No, listen to me, uh, Leroy Miles. No one was ever charged. Listen. No one was ever charged or found guilty for the shooting. So there is no jeopardy in that case because no one was ever charged or found guilty for the shooting itself. You see how, see how people come and they be talking about, ain't there jeopardy on that? Ain't there jeopardy on that? No, nah. because no one was ever charged or convicted for the shooting. The young lady saying that she's willing to go to the doctor and get the bullet fragment taken out of her face. To have Sean P. D. D. Combs charged in her situation. It's a hurting thing, man. To see another black woman say that. And she ain't mixing or mincing words. She's basically saying she got shot. Listen to me. The irony of this. She said, she, I got shot between my eyes. 
So you mean to tell me the person that got shot between their eyes did not see the person who shot them? No one was ever charged. Right? Or convicted. Leroy, you might be right on the statute of limitations. I don't really know what that is as far as that's concerned. Right? But that would be something that we could look into. You, hey, look, you've seen they just brought back the thing a couple of months ago that uh, enabled uh, Cassie to bring her case. When that little that that window thing that they gave open up in in New York, it gave you like was like a year or something like that. If you had been um, involved with any kind of um, mistreatment or anything like that, uh, the young lady also brought something against Jamie Foxx and a couple other people. We've seen a, a plethora of those cases from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I understand. I understand what the statute of limitations mean. I ain't talking and not knowing what I'm talking about. I'm saying that for the people who were saying, oh, you know, you know, um, is there's double jeopardy on the case? The fact of the matter is no one was ever charged or convicted for the shooting. You understand what I'm saying? So from that perspective, now that that was that was what that was now let me take you over once again to the keepy d situation in the keepy d situation right keepy d has been charged you go back to the infancy of what the case was about and when they started talking to keepy d and what he said had happened he said that the initial situation started at greenblatt's after tupac wrote hit him up tupac said a bunch of sinister things on hit them up you my foe foe make sure all their kids won't grow all of the things that he said and tupac was i think believed to be hurt the fact that he was shot and he felt like nobody was there for him his feelings i don't i don't come here to try to explain tupac's feelings how he felt how he should have felt what he should have been thinking how he should have did it tupac said what he said it is documented and well documented in what he said right Okay, with that being said, Greenblatt's, we had a meeting. He wanted to get rid of Suge and Tupac. Keefe D said that Sean P. Diddy Combs was scared at that time. He was terrified. He didn't know what to do. And Keefe D said, yeah, that we can handle that for like a million. Right? Go to Vegas. Situation happens in Vegas where... You know, something had happened way before. There was an alleged bounty on the death row chains and all of this other stuff that that supposedly had taken place, right? Um, They see Orlando, whatever happens, happens. Then the situation happens. And then Keefe D invokes Big uh, Zip. He invokes Sean B. D. P. Diddy Combs after the situation, calling him and asking him, was that, was that, was that, was that y'all? And Keefe D said, yeah that that was us and Keefe D basically said numerous amount of times that he didn't get paid. He didn't get paid. He didn't get paid. And that the money, what the, he, Keefe D said, the FBI told him that Sean P. Diddy Combs had gave the money to zip. Now how the FBI would know who knows, right? So now if the FBI told, allegedly told Keefe D, the Fed, he, Keefe D said the feds told him that Sean Pity D. Combs gave the money to Zip. How in the hell would the FBI know if what Keefe D is saying is true? This is what Keefe D said in the initial statement that he gave to Greg Cating. All of this is going to be used in court. Leroy, you don't know what the judge going to say. We're not going to try the case here on Straight Game TV. What we're going to do is deal with the facts. I just gave you the facts. I just gave you the facts. We're not talking about what's in the mind of somebody. We're talking about what is believed and what is not believed. We're talking about the presentation of what is evidently if that was the case, let's take Leroy's side of the argument for that game. If that was the case, when, when Keefe D gave his initial statement to Greg Cating and the U.S. attorney and the federal government at that particular time, 
they had the opportunity to say whether they believe what Keith D was stating was true or not, right? They chose to believe what Keith D said was true. And they gave him a proffer agreement protecting him at that particular time from the charges involving his involvement in the murder of Tupac Shakur. Could they have said, uh, objection, we don't believe that. We think you're lying. No, because Keefe D had said in the beginning of that statement, if you don't bullshit me, I won't bullshit you. I want you to understand something. If Keefe D is convicted in the murder of Tupac Shakur, then the circumstances involving that situation and surrounding that situation can lead up to the indictment of Sean P. Diddy Combs, an accessory or conspiracy in the murder of Tupac Shakur. We've seen people indicted in drug cases for conspiracy for just talking on the phone with somebody. Right or wrong? Any any of these real cats know what I'm talking about in the late eight in the early 80s when they was giving out them crazy sentences? Mandatory minimums, right? Involving situations. I we're not talking about criminal procedures. We're talking about no, we're not talking criminal procedures don't have nothing to do with this at the end of the day. Would, would you and I understand that. Anybody can sue anybody or charge anybody with anything. Uh, uh, Leroy Miles, if it began and stopped with you, then there would be no black men wrongfully convicted of murder and rape or anything else from that matter. Leroy? Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Block Ice. He, 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 you keep on, and I understand, Leroy. You, you're what you, Leroy. What you're trying to argue is that the criminal proceeding trumps the actual uh, evidence in which a person feel like they have, or a person feels like the pro, uh, the the police bring the prosecutor cases to be indicted. Right? We see all the time where. Somebody going somebody like I'll give you a prime example, Leroy, just to just to just so that you you don't think that I don't know what I'm talking about. Let me give you this. Let's let's, let's deal with this. So um, you go into you, you stopped in the car, bunch of guys in the car. Police walk up to you, said, um, where are you going at? You know, you said, no, I, you know, I don't want to answer questions. All I you know do is license and registration. You like to see my license, license registration. Step out the car. Right. I don't have to step out my car. OK. Um, they drag them out the car, right? After they drag them out the car, they proceed to go through the car, right? And then which they find drugs and guns, right? So number one, you have an illegal search and seizure. You don't have a consent to search. You don't have none of that, right? But yet the police officer writes up the case, forwards it to the prosecution's office, and the prosecutor then files charges. Now, they didn't think about procedure, all of that stuff that Leroy talking about. No, right? Now, what the defendant has to do is file an attorney. I had a cousin that had that happened to, right? And once they filed the case, then my cousin had money to get a good lawyer, and the lawyer got all of that thrown out based on the fact that it was an illegal search and siege, right? So now the case was no case, really. So don't tell me what can and can't happen regarding criminal uh, 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 criminal procedure. I get it, but that didn't stop them from filing the case. That's what I'm trying to say. It happens every day. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, once again, but when you have in one instance, a case that someone has been convicted of based on the fact that a jury has believed in the preponderance of evidence that it's more likely to have happened than not, and they convict that individual, then that's a very, very strong case. If the person on appeal cannot argue where well, there has been something wrong, uh, there was a, a procedure was overlooked. 
um, there was precedent that came before or after it or a case that involved something, right? It's that simple. It's like the Fonnie, uh, the Fonnie Willis situation in which the young lady who was trying to get her thrown off the Donald Trump case, you know, she was basically uh, stating cases, you know, under precedent that had nothing to do with the actual case that dealt with uh, 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 the um, Fonnie Willis case. It's just that simple. So, like I said, they filed the motion. They had the whole hearing and all of that, only to find out that Fonnie Willis really did nothing wrong. But there was an appearance of a conflict of interest based on her relationship with Nathan Wade. I understand that. Right. But we're talking about the fact of the matter that they're looking at the case and regarding the 1990 shooting of uh, the young lady, uh, Natanya Rubin and the, the arrest of Sean P. D. D. Combs and Jennifer Lopez and shine doing nine years. They're now looking at that. Like I said, you know, because they believe that there's a pattern of behavior. The young lady has always maintained that that Sean P. D. D. Combs was the person that shot her. She got shot in between her eyes, right? Little Rod also said that there was a shooting involved, involving one of um, Sean P. D. D. Combs' son's friends, Little G, in the bathroom in which he took pictures of, and they put that also in the civil case. See, that part right there, that is something real heavy that you just can't overlook because that's something that did happen. And that's something that little Rod said that he was there for. And he, and he, he was there for and could actually say that he saw, right. Then you go back to 1999. Then you go back to the Tupac Shakur case. Then it all starts to come together that somebody has the preponderance or, or should I say the propensity for violence. And then now you deal with, you know, what the federal government is going to do and what they feel like they should do. And like I said, all of the, the sex trafficking and stuff, I really don't believe all of that. I don't believe that, you know, like I said, Sean P. Diddy Combs got young kids. It could have been kids coming over the house to see his sons and his daughters and all of that. I don't believe all of that. Like I said, that that's something that Lil Rod was throwing out there, I believe, you know, from that perspective. Now, what as to what happened to him, I'm not going to say I don't believe that. I don't know that. That man stating what happened to him. Lil Rod said the stuff that happened to him. I'm going to let him stand on his words on that. I, I don't. But as far as like the, the little kids thing and stuff like that, when they put the pictures in the actual civil uh, case and you can go back and look at that, I didn't see anybody really underage doing anything wrong. And if it was underage people there, um, I think they came to see his kids, which a couple of the pictures of the girl who was there with his son, I think one of his son's girlfriend or something like that from that perspective. So and they were just having a good time or whatever. So I don't you know what I mean? Like I said, if you want to entertain that man, you can entertain anything you want to. As to the little Rob, what he said about what happened to him. I'm going to let his word stand on that. You know, I'm not going to deny what another man said happened to him. You know what I mean? Um, You know, from that perspective. So. No, it's not that I believe one aspect of the case and not the other. Once again, I'm talking about what somebody said they saw and happened in regards to, you know, underage people being there. I believe that. But do I believe that what he's saying as far as, you know, the, 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 the sex trafficking with minors and all of that? Dude, if that was really going on, we would see people coming up right now saying, yeah, X, Y and Z. This is what it was and so on and so forth. So, you know, and we have yet to see what it is. I'm not saying that I don't believe that. I'm talking about as to what Little Rod is saying himself. I'm not the judge, jury, or execution. The Leroy, please don't get in your feelings because the uh, uh, the jury of Straight Game TV did not fall in line with your criminal uh, 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 teachings of, uh, uh, of uh, um, criminal um, criminal law, if you will. Don't don't get in your feelings about that. We we we're not gonna do that. I'm saying to you, if Little Rod says something happened to him, who am I to say that it didn't happen to him? That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? But I'm saying as far as the little kid stuff and all of that, you know what I mean? And the painting showing PDD Combs as an Epstein is a is a is a stretch. You know, they even went to say that 50 Cent baby mom is a sex worker. Come on. We seen the picture with her and him holding hands. There was some kind of a relationship there. 
And if she felt like she could better deal 50 Cent for Sean P. Diddy Combs for whatever that is, you know what I mean? Okay. I, that ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? If he feel like he want to pay girls, you know, a monthly stipend to be around, to be at his beck and call, and they want to feel like they want to participate in him paying them a, a, a monthly stipend to be around for his beck and call, that's their decision. I know a lot of women. Uh, 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 I don't know him personally, but I know a lot of women who would agree to that. If he give a man gave them $20,000 a month, and I want you here when I want you here when I want you here, put you in the car, put you in your own apartment, and do all of that. Oh, absolutely. That This is not the first time that that ever happened. You know what I mean? And like I said, if she agreed to that, then hey, that's what that is. That's what you call taking care of your woman. You know what I mean? Like in, 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 in the real nature of what that is, that's what you call taking care of your woman. That's absolutely. That's voluntary. She, hey, you know, a lot of people can't relate to that because they ain't got that kind of money. You might be able to pay a little, help a little, pay a little car payment here. You know what I mean? You know, little little cable bill there. You know what I mean? Little light bill there. You know what I mean? She might have a Sears and Robux credit card bill she need paid. You know what I mean? You know. But on the flip side of that, yeah, there's people out there doing that right now. That that that, that ain't facing this kind of scrutiny right now. Yeah, you you right, Leroy. We, they not educated in the law and jury straight game. Isn't it, it, yeah, yeah, we, we know that, Leroy. We, we know that, yeah, you're right, right. I like Leroy, Leroy Miles, the Supreme Court. Uh, uh, you, you we're gonna nominate you for the Supreme Court, Leroy. After Clarence Thomas get up out there, we're gonna Leroy straight game uh chat room. We're gonna nominate Leroy for the uh Supreme Court seat that Clarence Thomas now holds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people, yeah, they like I said, you can call it what you want. People trick every day, but they put it under they 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 like to disguise it as something else, man. You know what I mean? It that's not like I said, that's having what you want when you want it. You ever heard of that? You ever heard of having what you want when you want it and being able to pay for it? <sighs> you know, it's just a different world, man. Trust me. Trust me. It's a different world, man. I love the conversations too, Leroy. Absolutely. But like I say, Leroy, just more on a serious note, I think you understand where I'm coming from, too. And like I said, I don't um, like to stare people into believing one thing or the other. Um, you believe Leroy said he believed that he is guilty of all the allegations. Um, but there has been really no proof, Leroy. That's the reason why. Um, um, Lucian Grange from Universal and Universal, they have now. Uh, file to be removed from the lawsuit based on the it, it was an overreach that was an overreach they put the, the universal not the, right you know what i mean so that's why i'm saying that's why i don't believe everything because i know for a fact when you file a brief right you deal with the immediate facts that are presented and then they filed it an amended complaint and then put in the stuff about 50 cent baby mama and these other girls and all of that being on monthly stipends or whatever you want to call you. That has nothing do to do with any kind of criminal action. Nothing whatsoever. You understand what I'm saying? That has nothing to do with any kind of criminal. You, you, they named people. They what, 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 what happened was they seen how fast Cassie filed. Uh, um, Cassie lawsuit was settled. They figured that, hey, you know what? You've been to a couple of parties, whatever, whatever. And he can make these accusations right now, allegations, and some to be believed, some to be not believed, and we don't really know yet, right? They seen how fast the Cassie lawsuit was settled, and I think they were hoping for the same result. And then they got a little bit overzealous about who they put in the lawsuit, hoping that they could apply pressure and receiving a quick settlement only to find out that that wouldn't happen and it has not happened yet. It's just that simple. Leroy, so now you understand what I'm saying now, Leroy. <laughs> you, you, you see that? 
And once Universal and Lucian Grange, right, once they get removed from this lawsuit, it's going to make the lawsuit less believable. Once it's going to make the lawsuit less believable, it's like, yo, well, if they got out of it, is anything that he's saying true? Because he was trying to, the, the uh, uh, Lil Rod's lawyer was trying to hold people who had nothing to do with the situation that they're alleging. So uh, let me answer me this. What did Lucian Grange and Universal Music Group have to do, do with um, uh, uh, 50 Cent's uh, baby mama being a sex worker or an alleged sex worker? It doesn't even tie in. It doesn't make sense. A possibility, J JD. Like I said, it, it's remained to be seen. Like I said, I think what the smart move is is for Diddy to wait and see, you know, what the situation happens with the Universal Music Group and Lucian Grange, them filing their motion to be removed from the lawsuit, and then you would proceed accordingly from that perspective. And like I said, at the end of the day, what the what the um outcome will be, it, I it 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 weakens the case. It weakens Lil Rod's case because that now you can you will plainly be able to see that Little Rod's attorney was overzealous and filing and putting and including people that had nothing to do with what was going on or what was alleged to have happened. Okay, Leroy, how do you prove that Sean P. Diddy Cone spike drinks? Prove it. Give me that. Wouldn't that be just hearsay like you were just talking about? See, you're trying to argue both sides of the case, Leroy. You, you, Leroy, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. How do you prove that, Leroy? And so, and, and Keith e. D was not an eyewitness to the meeting that he had with Sean P. D. D. Combs and asking him to get rid of Suge and Tupac for a million dollars. Did you hear what I just asked you? I'm just cause see now now you're coming around, Leroy. Now you 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 stepped away from the being the the uh, uh, law teacher to now uh, the common sense guy. <laughs> Iconic A three, you funny. <laughs> you and Spike did. <laughs> oh man. Like I said, once again, I don't, like I said, I don't know who was spiked by what. Were they spurs? Was it needles? Was it drinks? I don't know who spiked what and how they spiked it. All I know right now is that these are allegations. You know, um, uh, uh, what's the, the boy, uh, um, the actor short, what's his name? Now the actor short, uh, uh forgot his name. What, what, what's the guy name y'all? Marcus short. Uh, what, what was his name? Marcus Short or something like that? No, not too short. It was the actor. Mark, Columbus Short. Now, Columbus Short came out and basically said some things that he had went over to the to party. Um, and and um and he he got a drink of some champagne. And after he he got the champagne, right? He said that he felt dizzy and he got up out there. So once again, you got people making these 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 same accusations and talking the same thing. People like that, you tend to believe a little bit more based on the fact that they really don't have no reason to lie. You know what I mean? And if somebody were to to uh to um you know come forward with something like that, it would be something like that with him. But best believe now, this is this is the cold part about the game. I guarantee you that the um the authorities have been been talking to uh uh, Columbus Short. I mean, I'm sorry. What's his name again, dude? Yeah, the the actor. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Short. Short is his name. Last name is his name. Short. Let me see. What is his name again? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, Columbus short. Yeah. So like I said, so if they if they really doing a serious investigation, oh, he made that, they looked on the internet, and they're going to be like, yeah, you said that your drink was spiked by, you know, you believe it. Like I said, but this, this, this again, is Leroy short? That's what his name is? Okay. I don't know. I've been short is the last name. I don't want to get um, butchered a man name. Like I said, that's not why I'm here. But more importantly, um, when you talk about, uh, I think it's Columbus short though. Um, when you talk about that, from that perspective, once again, you know, he said that, but did he get the drink from Diddy? Did, did he hand him the drink? You know, it could be, you know, that, like I said, that's all can be blamed on somebody else. If that's really true, I don't know if it's true or not. But like I said, the situation that we're talking about, Keefe D situation, them bringing up the 1999 shooting of uh, uh, Natanya Rubin versus the Keefe D situation. Like I said, Leroy Miles, um, yeah, like I said, once again, they're going to they're gonna speak with everybody. And so, you know. Yeah, JD, JD being funny. It's Columbus short. I, I, I know what it is. But like I said, at the end of the day, um, when we talk about that, that's what it is, man. So we're going to see what happens. Like I said, it's a lot of things that's now festering up. You know what I mean? And like I said, I don't, me personally, I don't know if it's true, if it's false. All of those things will be decided in due time. I think it's going to be interesting, though. I think it's going to be real interesting, you know, if there are any charges filed. But I think it's going to be more interesting to watch this Keefe D situation coming up soon. I think that's going to be the most interesting thing that we have yet to see involved in anything. Because if Keefe D, like I said, is convicted based on his statements given to Greg Cating them, then there is a strong possibility that Sean P. D. D. Combs can be indicted for the conspiracy, conspiracy involving the murder of Tupac Shakur for hire conspiracy and the death of Tupac Shakur oh absolutely oh absolutely like I said based on everything that's in that statement you know and that's not hearsay that's not that's actual facts like I said if Little Rod can make accusations in a civil lawsuit about stuff that he's alleging right and and it's just civil Keefe D now was involved in a criminal murder case involving one of the most successful rappers in history right and has not been convicted yet but if he's convicted on that statement on those statements that he's made then everything is believed to be true and you can best believe that people will be chanting and 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 wanting justice not to be just done in the situation involving Keefe D but like he said well if Keefe D is to be believed and he convicted for that then everything he said to be true then what he said to be true about Sean P. Diddy Combs is true also. That's just the facts of the nature. I, like I said, nothing not I created, nothing not I came up with, you know? Like I said. Well, no, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, he, I mean, like, I wouldn't say anything for a deal. I think that he was being honest at first until it came to to to, to come, come bite him, you know, back, like I said, because he kept talking. I don't think he understood the deal that he was given. And I, for him, he should be mad at the lawyer that helped him make that deal with the government at that particular time. But like I say, ignorance of the law. Listen to me, man. CT, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Because they ran the red light and didn't see the stop sign right there. I mean, they ran the stop sign and didn't see the stop sign right there. That's no excuse. You still ran the stop sign. You see what I'm saying? So like I said, a lot of times people want to do over. You know, they won the Monday morning quarterback the situation. It just doesn't just doesn't have. Yeah, Mark Garagos, I respect Mark Garagos. But like I said, once again, I don't see Mark Garagos on this case right here. I don't know if Diddy can pay Mark. Mark Garagos, he usually looking for a million dollars up front. You know what I mean? We'll see. Like I said, at the end of the day, we'll see. Your boy Delray, one love. Thank you for everybody that came through. Straight game.